So, we hear this a lot, don't we? You've got to put out great content. This is one of the keys. What is great content? I've never heard anybody ask that question, and I've never seen anybody try and answer it. I do not profess under any, any way, shape, or form that this is a definitive guide for what is good content. All I can just tell you is from the things I see, from the things I've tested, from the people I've worked with, these are the factors that really seem to make a difference. So firstly, it's original. That goes without saying, you know that, but actually an awful lot of the internet doesn't bother with original content. It's a definitive source of information. Now what do I mean by that? I mean, I mean that if you turn up and visit a page, when you leave, you know about as much as you can imagine about that page, about that topic rather. Did I learn what I needed to learn? Pretty much everything, really a deep source of information. You have good use of language. I'm talking about spelling, I'm talking about you know, the basics here, but so many people don't actually use commas in the right places or question marks at the end of questions. Well, if you're going to be, have, put out great content, you need to do this stuff. Now, I'm in a kind of unusual situation because in my previous job, I worked in the same building as the BBC office. So I, uh, about ooh, July last year, I went for lunch with uh, Gavin Hewitt, who's the BBC's Europe editor. He's been a journalist for I don't know how long, and I wouldn't try and embarrass him to say, but quite a long time. And obviously, if you're the edit, one of the editorial team, the editor team at BBC, you know your stuff when it comes to content. This is the kind of thing we hear about when you read copywriting courses, but we don't actually think about it so much when we're writing our content. So, his suggestion, or rather his description, was that he spends more time on the headline on the first two paragraphs than the entire rest of the article put together. Because if the headline and the first two paragraphs don't do what they need to do, no one's going to read the rest, so he might as well not have written it. We probably don't think that way, and we probably should. So, how long is your page? The bottom line from all the experiments I've done and all the things I've seen in Google is that longer pages do much better than shorter pages. And that makes a certain amount of sense. If you are an authoritative, a definitive source on your topic, can you cover that in six paragraphs? If you're really being definitive, 10 paragraphs is better. Right? It's fairly straightforward, I think. Um, you try and write around the topic. Now, this is kind of important, too. If you think about the way that the average web visitor behaves, they will, I mean, you've seen all this in your analytics reports, but they will arrive at your website and the bounce rate is going to be at the good end, perhaps 50%, and at the bad end, perhaps 90%. But the vast majority of people that visit your website will not read more than one page. In fact, they might not even read the one page. So when you think about that, actually separating your content out by individual keywords, whilst it makes a lot of sense, isn't actually necessarily being definitive. You could, for example, pick a couple of keywords that relate very, very closely to your topic and just write a paragraph about that particular topic in amongst it. That will make the content rounder, it will make the content better quality for the reader. Now I would suggest, and lots of you in this room will have heard me say this before, but I would suggest that you use the Google Wonder Wheel for that. That's Google's search tool telling you what Google thinks is the most, are the, the most five or six phrases related to the, the phrase you've input. So if you put in sweets, it will tell you that chocolate bonbons or whatever it thinks are the most relative. Now that's much better than seeing a normal keyword list where it tells you there's 800, 600 phrases. This is what Google thinks is most appropriate. You'll use things image-based that are related as well. This means YouTube, this means videos, this means images. Now it might be that the image does not relate in any way, shape or form to the topic. Probably not a good thing, but it might mean that. But you should at least tag it so that it does appear to relate to the topic. Now, obviously, what you want to do is have an image that relates very closely to your subject. That would be the best way forward. Now, this is where a lot of this uh, presentation is going to go from here, and that's referencing. What do you do about proving to people that you really are an authority on your subject? You could link out. You could link out to subject to pages that are also themselves authority sites. You would update your page on a regular basis. Makes some sense, I guess. And you would think about user-generated content to some extent as well. That, of course, will help 